Today, my top five takes coming out of a Sunday in the National Football League. Number five. I am devastated by the injury to Brees Hall. I mean, just devastated. And I'm fighting my normal inclination. So here's what I genuinely believe. I believe that this is a new and different time for the Jets. I am in. I have bought in on the young players. I have bought in on the coach. And I am fighting my inclination to believe that this is just another example of how nothing can ever go right for us. Like all my life, just when things seemed good, the last time that you felt the Jets were the best team in the NFL, not that they feel that way now, but there was a moment in time when the Jets looked like the best team in the NFL. And then week one of 1999, Vinny Testaverde, without being touched, tore his Achilles. Those are the kinds of things that have happened to us. It feels like all of my life. And so I'm fighting like crazy my inclination to feel that way that we have this extraordinarily special young rookie running back who it appears tore his ACL yesterday. The coach was very honest about it afterwards. I haven't heard any official word on it yet, but that clearly seems to be where it's going. I'm not going to allow myself to go there. It's obviously a devastating injury. I'm devastated for the team. I'm devastated for the kid. Mostly I'm devastated for myself. But I'm not going to allow myself to think, so that means nothing good can ever happen to us. I believe this is a new era. I believe this is a new time. That game yesterday is a game the Jets lose always. They always, the backup quarterback always beats us. So I am thrilled that the Jets found a way to win that game. And they're going to find a way to overcome this injury as well. I, I believe I'm not going to allow myself to get negative about it. Number four. Uh, number four, the NFC East is the best division in the National Football League. Two years removed from being a laughing stock. Two years ago, we were we were asking aloud the question, is the NFC East the worst division in NFL history? A and the answer was probably yes. Now it's the best. So I'll say it again. The Eagles are right now probably, well, they're one of the two or three best teams in the NFL. Maybe, I think I still think Buffalo is the best, but whatever. The Eagles are right there. The Giants are six and one. The Cowboys are five and two and looking very, very good. And if you took the worst, the last place team in every division, and lined them up and had a tournament with them, the Washington Commanders would win. They're the best worst team in the NFL. And by the way, losing Carson Wentz is always the magic touch. What, what, what did you did you say you put some money on them to make the playoffs as soon as he got hurt? The day after Carson Wentz got injured, I laid some money on Washington to make the playoffs. I got them at plus 650, and that bet is going to pay off for me. Yeah, I, I actually think it might because... Um, and I think that Taylor Heineke might wind up remaining the quarterback after Wentz gets back. Let's see how that goes. But anyway, that's take number four. They are the best division in the NFL. Number three. Joe Burrow is number three. Here's the deal. What you have to remind yourself, early in the season, I kept thinking, does Burrow have a little flash in the pan thing going here? Why does this look so bad? They don't look good. It's not. It just doesn't look the same. And Rex is the one who said it to me this morning. Joe Burrow missed all of training camp. He missed all that time he had. Was it an appendicitis? What did he have? An appendix, right? That's right. Not th I keep saying spleen. It wasn't a spleen. It was his appendix. Either way, he had to have this surgery, and so he missed all this time. And right, we just think to ourselves, oh, that's nothing. He's fine. It's not a knee. No, it's not. The quarterback can't miss all of training camp and then step out there like nothing ever happened. So now, all of a sudden, Joe Burrow, I know Atlanta was playing without a lot of their guys yesterday. But there was a moment in time when I thought he was going to throw for 500 yards. And if they needed to, he would have. That, that game did not remain close long enough for him to have to keep doing it. But what, he wind up 455 yesterday? Mm -hmm. I mean, so just Joe Burrow is awesome. He's that guy. And just remember, when it started slowly this year, a lot of that had to do with the time that he missed in training camp. Number two. Uh, Rodgers and Brady, I just want to say this. Rule them out at your own risk. Like, Everything about watching them says they're finished. Their teams are finished. They don't look good. They don't look right. They don't look the same. I just can't bring myself to give up on either of them. I think the Packers are playing wrong. I think their coach is getting it wrong. I think losing Devontae Adams is the death blow. They will not, they have no chance of winning the Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. But the idea that they won't get it turned around at least a little and look like a much better team than this, I just refuse to say it. And again, Brady, Bucks, they're in first place. They're awful, but they're in first place. So they have the luxury of two and a half months to figure this thing out. So, again, bet against Tom Brady to do that at your own risk. I know he doesn't look the same. I know whatever's going on in his life is obviously taking a toll on him. I see it all. I see what you see. But I will just one more time say, 
rule those guys out at this moment at your own risk. Number one. And then finally, number one. I'm going to lose the music on this because I want to get quick takes from the, the hashtag crew, particularly from Nuno. So because the Jets were playing in the 4 o'clock window yesterday, um, the way I watch these games, I always have one game on and then red zone. And I yesterday, the game I, I decided I wanted to watch was the Giant game. I, I, I've not sat down and just watched them from start to finish uh, much this season, and I just want to see what's going on there. And here's what I came away thinking, Nuno. Daniel Jones is good. You have no receivers. The Giants have no receivers. You talk about teams that have been, like like if the Giants had the receivers that Green Bay has, they'd be dangerous. He's throwing the ball to people whose names I've never heard in my entire life, and they're dropping it every time. I mean, the drops yesterday were infuriating. But he stands in there. He's making good plays. He runs the ball extraordinarily well. He's not making the big mistakes. Daniel Jones has turned into a pretty good player. Again, we have to temper our expectations. He's not Patrick Mahomes. But I think Daniel Jones is a pretty good quarterback, which is way better than what I think anyone thought of him a year ago. And he does feel like he is ascending. As a Giant fan, what are your thoughts? I like what he's doing because what, for me, what it does or shows is that this coaching staff has taken – his strengths and actually made that as a po- made it as a positive and said, "Hey, we don't have the weapons, right? Even on that first drive, that touchdown to Darius Slayton, Slayton did everything in his power to drop that ball, and yeah. it was just that it was just thrown perfectly. And there was so many. And I know Orlowski, the oh, they only threw it one time in the fourth quarter. It's because you had no one. You saw it when he started throwing to Wandale Robinson, who was the only capable running uh, wide receiver they have. It was." Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.